In lesson four, we're going to be looking at scaling and area. So we're going to be looking at kind of what happens to the area as we're dilating shapes. So for page 225, just answer those three questions and then come back to the video. Um, so what number times itself equals 25? So hopefully you um, came up with five. What times itself gives you 81? So that's nine. And what number times itself gives you 10? Um, so you might have had to come up with some different strategies for this one, um, like guess and check or something else, but maybe about 3.2. So remember that when we multiply a number by itself, that's called squaring it, okay? So anytime we have two numbers times themselves, we can write it once with an exponent of a two. And so the backwards version, which is what you're doing, finding what multiplies to 25, that's the same number. That's, um, if you remember, called square rooting. Okay, so square root of 25, square root of 81, square root of 10 would be how you would have used your calculator possibly to get that 3.2. Okay, maybe you knew 10 was close to 9 and you knew 3 times 3 was 9. So you guessed some decimals around 3 until you got one that was close to 10. All right, on page 225, the first thing, um, so you've got this rectangle here. You're going to come up with the area of it, and then you're going to dilate the rectangle with a skill factor of 2, then find that area. Dilate with a skill factor of 3, then find that area. So remember to dilate on a grid, okay? So you know that this length is 2. So if we're dilating it by a factor of 2, that's doubling it, okay? So now we're going to be at a length of 4. This is 5, so the dilated by a skill factor of 2 will be at 10. Whoops. Um, so you'll end up with 1 this size. Okay, then find the area of it, then do the skill factor of 3, so triple all those side lengths, and come up with the area of that one. So go ahead and do that, then come back. All right, so the area of the first one, we knew that we had a, a width of two and a length of five, okay? So if we do area, then we will get um, two times five or 10 units squared for that area. Then for the scale factored by two, you came up with lengths of four and 10. So four times 10 gave you 40. And for the rectangle dilated by a scale factor of three, so those lengths tripled, so you ended up with six and 15. So six times 15 gave you an area of 90. So what I want you to do now is fill those in on the table on page 226. Okay, so we know this. Then let's fill in the rest. So the strategy that I was using was multiplying the lengths by the skill factor. So you could use that to help you with the one half, the 2.5 and the four. Then when you wanna do the factor by which the area changed, you're gonna do the new area divided by the original area. And remember the original area is this one. Okay, so if we're doing New area, so in this one it would be 40 is the new area divided by the original area 10. That would mean that this one's area changed by a factor of four. Or the original area divided by the original area would be by a skill factor of one. So go ahead and fill in that table, then come back to the video. All right, so if you're doing a skill factor, let's do four first, okay? So if we're doing a skill factor of four, then each of these lengths would be multiplied by four. So two times four is eight. Five times four is 20. Then the area would be length times width, which would be 160 units squared. Then we could do the 160 divided by our original area to see that the area factor um, was 16. So the area is actually 16 times bigger than the original. 
um, if we do the one half, so two times a half is one, five times a half is 2.5. Multiply those together to get our area of 2.5. Take the new area divided by the original area and we will get that area factor of 0.25. Um, then multiply by 2.5. So 2 times 2.5 gave us 5. 5 times 2.5 gave us 12.5. Multiplying length times width to find the area gave us 62.5. So 62.5 divided by the original area of 10 gave us a, an area factor of 6.25. And then we can finish off this one, original, or er, New area 10 divided by original. New area 90 divided by original 10 gives us an area factor of 9. So this should be your filled in um, table. So then let's um, take a look at answering those other questions there. So let's, um, so we've just got a rectangle here without any measurements on it. So we just call the length L and the width W. What's an expression for the area? And don't make it complicated, just what's the area? Well, you do length times width, so L times W. Now let's say that we have a new rectangle. Okay, so our new rectangle is dilated by a scale factor of K. So what would our new length be? So what were we doing in the last one to find our new length? We were taking the original length and multiplying it by K. So we just did K times that L. Okay, that original length. And for our width, we would just do our scale factor times the width. So just K times W, K times L. So then what would our area be? And again, it's going to be length times width. So what's our length? And so our length is KL. And what's our width? In this shape, it's KW. So this would be our area. And if you wanted to simplify that, okay, so just all of these are multiplied. So K times K is K squared times L times W. So you'll see that you just get this scale factor squared in here and then times your original area. Okay, so that K ended up in there twice since we extended both the length and the width. So this new dilated rectangle is K squared times bigger than the original area. So this is just um, kind of what did we get on that last page. So for the algebraic expression, um, for the numbers in the table to represent each other. So how do they how do they relate to each other? Sorry, I can't talk today. Okay, so how do they relate to each other in our table? So we see this is the scale factor. This area factor is actually the k squared. So this is 0.5 squared is 0.25, okay? One squared is one, two squared is four, 2.5 squared is 6.25, okay? And so on, three squared and four squared. So this is just our scale factor squared. Um, did, the, did the rule hold true for scale factors that weren't whole numbers? Yes. Okay, it held true on the 0.5 and the 2.5. That when we multiplied the area um, times the scale factor, the original area times the scale factor, okay, because here's your original area 10. So we would do 10 times our scale factor squared. So 10 times that, and you can put 0.5 squared here, but that equals the 2.5. Okay, or you can multiply by this which is this scale factor squared. So 10 times one squared was 10. 10 times the scale factor squared was 40. 
10 times the 2.5 squared was 62.5 and so on. Okay, so it worked for whole number scales and for decimal scales. So suppose, um, and then, so these two are just rewriting in um, generic forms like we already did. So suppose that we had the original rectangle by a scale, by a factor of K, what would the expression be for the area? So it would equal the original area, which is two times five, 10 times the scale factor squared. So that's how we could have found all of those. And now if instead of, and I'm going to write new area here. So now if we, um, if instead of having the area, if, if we didn't know the original rectangle's area was 10, what if we called that A? What would the expression be? Just area times the scale factor squared. So now that's on rectangles. So let's take a look at page 227. And so Andre says, okay, so now we know that this works for a rectangle, that if it has a scale factor of K, then the area is going to be K squared. Does this apply to other shapes? And Jada says, so here's a shape that's not a rectangle. So this big blob, say its area is A square unit. So the area of this blob is A. Let's draw some rectangles on it that get smaller and smaller to fit the remaining empty spaces. So they just start drawing rectangles in here. Okay. Um, with enough rectangles, we can close can come close to covering the whole blob. So they're just finding the area of each of these rectangles and saying that's pretty close to this blob. So Andre says those these rectangles start to make a nice approximation of the blob. If we wanted to get closer, we could add even more rectangles. Like you could start adding more. Okay, and they would just keep getting smaller and smaller and smaller and covering up more and more space in that blob. The sum of the areas of the rectangles would add up to the area of the blob. I think we're almost there. So go ahead and read the questions on page 227. Okay, write them down in your book. Explain your reasoning and then come back to the video. All right, so I'm just gonna talk through a couple of these things and you can compare it to your answers um, for those three questions in your workbook. So um, what happens to the area of the blob when it's dilated by a scale factor of K? So then we can just say multiplied by K squared, just like in the rectangle. Okay, because all of those rectangles, okay, we're estimating the area of the blob. So we know that the rectangles, if, if they are dilated by a scale factor of K, then their areas are are also dilated, but by a scale factor of K squared. So if these are being dilated by K squared, then the whole blob would be dilated by K squared as well. So multiplied by K squared. <clears throat> so how many rectangles were there in that blob? So if you count them up, there were nine rectangles in that blob. So if we were to think about an expression for the area of the blob, we could just add up all of those areas, the area of each of the nine rectangles. So A1 plus A2, area of the third one, fourth one, fifth one, so on. We could just add those all together. So now if we were going to dilate them, okay, so now if we dilated by a scale factor of K, what would that do to each of these area rectangles, or um, the rectangles areas? So we know that each of those, if we um, dilate by a scale factor of K, each of the areas would be multiplied by K squared. So then we could just add a K squared or multiply K squared to each of them. And I just don't want to write them all out. So multiply the first area by K squared, the second area, the third area, and so on, and add them up. So each of those, each of those have a K squared factor. So we could just factor the K squared out. 
times each of those areas. So remember that this represented the blob. Okay, all of these areas represented the blob. So now we're saying that um, K squared will work for any shape. That if you dilate it by a scale factor of K, the area will dilate by a scale factor of, or a factor of K squared, no matter what the shape is, since every shape can be kind of broken down into a ton of little rectangles. All right, so suppose, so let's take a look and see if we understand the lesson. So suppose we dilate um, a shape by a factor of two. Will the area be dilated um, by twice the original? Okay, so here's our shape is 40 square units. Okay, so if we dilate the shape by a factor of two, will it, um, will the area be dilated by twice the original? Okay, so it's going to be two squared. So it's going to be four times the original. Okay, because it'll be that scale factor squared. So if k equals 2, then the area factor is going to be k squared, which is 2 squared. So suppose we dilate um, <clears throat> the shape by a scale factor of 1 half or 0. 0.5. Will the area be dilated? Will the area of the dilated figure be half the original? Okay, no, because it's going to be 40 times the scale factor squared. So 40 times 0.5 squared, okay, and 0.5 squared is 0.25, so it's going to be 10. Suppose we dilate a shape by a scale factor of 3.5. How would you find the area, okay, of the dilated shape? So we know it's 40 to begin with. That's what they told us. And then just multiply. Okay, by the skill factor twice or the skill factor squared. So figure out um, 3.5 squared in your calculator um, is 12.25. And then multiply that by 40 and you get 490. And then was it, I think it was inches. Oh, units squared. Okay, so original area times the scale factor squared will get you the new area. All right, so here's the summary. So if we dilate a rectangle by a scale factor of three, what do you think will happen to the new rectangle? So you can see in this diagram that they show you um, that if you do dilate it by a scale factor of three, right? So this will triple. So you'll get three of these tall and you'll get three of them wide, okay? So it triples those length and width, which actually gives you nine total rectangles, which is where the area is, okay? So if you extend each <clears throat> side by a factor of three, okay, you actually get nine total in the area. So the area is changing by, whoops, not nine squared, um, by three squared or nine. Okay, so because you, you end up with two of those threes in there. So it's nine times the original. And so in general, if you multiply the, the length by K and the width by K, the area will be multiplied by K squared. So this is for any shape. So we looked at it with rectangles, then we kind of generalized it with a blob. So this is going to be for any shape. If the scale factor is K, then the area factor is K squared.